so here's the what we call the rescue scene. It's called scene 52 in Dune where they go to the spice crawlers and they're checking them out and then a uh, worm comes. And they're like, holy shit, we got to deal with this. The crawler uh, is supposed to be lifted off and it that's the story. It doesn't work. And so they got to land and pick up the guys. I can solo some stems right now and show you what I mean. But uh, the whole point of that scene is there's so many dynamics and tricks and things that we use to to pull that off and i'll show you what we did and how we did some of them uh, I, I love that scene because it has kind of a little of everything in it it's got great dialogue that's uh fighting to get through the storm it has a little whisper from paul it's got cool uh ancient voices spinning around your head the Quizar tatarak and all that stuff uh all that design stuff and then uh, the sound effects speak for themselves. Mark Mangini and Theo Green, Doug Hemphill mixing them, fantastic job. They, they put together such a great, dense track of great material. It was a wealth of things to try and wrangle, uh, which was great, but very difficult because there's so many things to deal with. And our job was to sculpt this and really tell a great story and, and pull you in and then uh, wow you with certain things and then really bring it down to such a personal level with, with Paul when he kneels down and he feels spice for the first time. And then it's, oh my God, there's giant worms coming. So the dynamics are just so much fun. Denis is a master of that, of, of showing you this story that is just such character driven and such grandiose great things happening all in one scene so here's just dialogue this is duke leto atreides we're coming down to extract the crew of delta ajax niner so he's got a futz on him is what we call a futz is uh crunching him into like a a little mic on his radio and it sounds like in a helicopter kind of thing one little side note there are no helicopter sounds in this movie no recordings of helicopters used bug wings, cat purrs, all kinds of weird stuff. You have no idea what's in there. It's amazing. Shield generators weigh 100 kilos each. Yes, Gurney, have our escorts throw out the shield generators. Yes, sir. And Paul, I want you at the back of the thopter. Guide them in. Delta Ajax Niner, put seven men each in my ships now. So if you notice within that scene, we're in a helicopter and I gave it this short little room for the cockpit. I try to play perspectives when I can. You can't go too far with that because you'll lose people, but uh, I, you'll see throughout the movie, I'm always messing with that. When uh, Paul is in the back of the copter, I give him a little more space. When uh, uh, the Duke is talking to his son, he gives a little bit more room and he's a little further away. And then we jump back to him and you get a closer, uh, closer mic perspective. So there's a lot of little subtle things like that. If you catch it, great. If not, I hope it gives you a feel that maybe you didn't notice. Uh, but you feel it. It's all those guys in the background yelling and you know, they say, look out, all that. On top is uh, Paul. You go to Atmos here. Hey! Hey! Well, because it got bigger and you want to just f fill it out a little bit. Yeah, so the point uh, when Paul's yelling, the storm is so loud that you don't want him to be super clear and up front. You want him to fight through the sandstorm. If I made him super clear and we carved everything out, I'd be like, wow, that sounds like he's on a set. So you try to get him within the atmosphere of what he's doing. He's fighting through a storm. If you were yelling in a storm like that, no one could hear you, even if you screamed, right? So we're trying to get that little, you know, audience perspective of him fighting through this big storm and yelling at his guys like, hurry up, let's get the hell out of here. And then, of course, music stem. Now that was me 
yanking the score big time because uh, that was not Alan. That big ham-fisted move was mine. But I did it on a purpose because that that big cloud comes over and goes Whoa! like that and envelops Paul, and I yank the score down. What it does is pulls the rug out from you. If you're an audience member, you're like, what? What happened? And then you're stuck inside Paul's head for a moment. And it's like, wow, what is he thinking and feeling at that moment? Uh, all done on purpose. Actually, before that, the uh, when the worm comes out. Yeah, that's a good one. I purposely let the sound effects do the big burst right here. And then pull the score out of that and let it grow big time after this. If I run over that, you don't get the power of this giant worm. You have to illustrate that with sound effects. He can't just say, okay, here's the brass. It sounds great. It's really cool. But you got to play you know, a massive worm bursting through the sound, and that's the whole point of the scene. So it's a delicate balance, and I, I pulled back more in the theater with that and waited for a second and then come up on it, and you'll, you'll hear it right here. catching the theme and I'm also filling up the audience at that point and then it drops down and cuts off with the dynamics of Paul in his head. Mm -hmm. 